The Cowboys continuously disappoint. Damien, th th something's behind that, right? No. Are we oh. losing Damien? What, 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 big fella. Yeah. Just talk about this stuff. You, you got my back uh, hurting right now. So yeah, I had to stand up a little bit. Okay. Like, like, <laughs> what, like, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? Like, like, we, I just because people I, knocking on the glass. Yeah. Because knocking on the glass. We're talking about the purpose of arguing. We've been talking. No, 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 the, cow the Cowboys coach is like doom and gloom. Like I've always said, like the, the main problem with the Cowboys, no. their big time stars just need to play like big time stars in the big time moments. Which is which is kind of a problem. You can't don't tell me about a winning culture when you fizzle out in the playoffs. That's the problem. Well, I mean, you don't just make, you're making me look very small, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> just for the record, I, I'm, I'm feeling extremely uncomfortable with how small I look on TV right now. Mike T, jump in here. Who you, you're hearing two sides yeah. of one interesting debate. Where are you? Yeah, the culture definitely manifests itself as a massive distraction, and here's why. When we're talking about Kansas City, Cincinnati, San Francisco, all the teams that are competing for, for a title, their discourse around contracts and money never goes public. So when we see things like Micah Parsons way in, now other relatives of C.D. Lamb, talking about what Dak should make, that's where the culture manifests itself. To your point, Greedy, where everyone has this higher inflated image of themselves, you never hear, hey, what should you know Brandon Ayuk make or Christian McCaffrey make? Like, and believe me, there are strong feelings amongst agents and relatives, but the culture manifests itself in the offseason and it's massive distractions on social media. And if they had authentic leadership, that wouldn't happen. Okay, I, we didn't even get to the Aaron Rodgers stuff, which I am planning here. <laughs> Help yourself, big fella. It'll make you feel better. He is so I, disgruntled in indeed. <laughs> in the meantime, take one to the Cowboys. What do you say? No, I was on. I was on your bandwagon. I, I like it. I like it, especially for for our ratings. Um, especially because last year I felt like they actually should have kept uh, Ezekiel Elliott. I feel like the Cowboys should have reached out to the Tennessee Titans about Derrick Henry at the trade deadline, and they did it. I feel like Saquon would be the missing piece, but Greeny. I am with Dominique now as far as the Texans for Saquon. I just think when you look at the Houston Texans and you look at that quarterback, to me, it is all about C.J. Stroud. Why did Dalton Schultz say, oh, yeah, I'm not waiting for a free agency? You sign me now. Sign me now because that quarterback can do a lot of things. I do think the Cowboys need another running back, and it would be great if it was Saquon, but I, 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 I'm good with the Texans. Let me make my case to you, Dan. Okay, lead to, lead to the on, Bishop. I, I did this on radio <laughs> yesterday. Hembo was throwing all these names at me of running backs who had better numbers than Saquon Barkley. And in every single case over the last two years, I said, who was their quarterback? Saquon Barkley has been doing more with less than anybody in the league. Saquon Barkley, if you gave him, I'm just making this up, Josh Allen, do you think he mm -hmm. wouldn't have put up the numbers James Cook did last year? If you put him in an offense that they won in San Francisco, you're telling me he couldn't have a McCaffrey-esque impact on it? Oh, yes, he could, and that's exactly what the Cowboys need. I believe that Saquon is the difference maker, is a difference maker on a greater level than he's being given Dominique credit for. Dominique can't stand it. <laughs> Why can't he stand it? What, 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 part, what lies am I telling? Well, in, the, in the words of the great Ryan Clark. Because I think it was, it, it was, when, it was when you said uh, Christian McCaffrey. Because Saquon does have the ability to do that. But Dallas isn't the place with the offensive minds that is going to bring out that part of his game. That's why I like Houston. I like Houston because I think that they do have a young, creative offensive Slowick. mind in Bobby Slowick that can that is going to put Saquon in those positions and is going to use those schemes to help create advantages. That's not what they do in Dallas. They want a running back that's more akin to, uh, I guess, Derrick Henry, where, all right, we need eight yards, we, or excuse me, we need five, six, seven yards, hand him the ball, he's gonna get us that, break some big plays every now and then. I don't know that you get the most out of Saquon in a situation like Dallas. Okay, 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 I have a stat that will actually help you. Go. Saquon to the Cowboys. Please. Okay, you talk about Saquon's numbers. They are deceiving. Do you know where the Giants ranked in run block win rate? Second to last in the NFL. Yes. So when you talk about Saquon's numbers, it is easy to say, like, oh, not as impressive. But the infrastructure around him, 
not the greatest, and he's still doing a lot. Saquon Barkley got made get Daniel Jones eighty million guaranteed dollars. <laughs> How much better can you be than that? <laughs> D Wood, you're on my side. Yeah, you're nay. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I've, I've constantly thrown out both Texas teams because yes. I think both Texas teams does does make sense. But ultimately, here's what here's what I want to say to you, Green. Yeah. Number one, the Dallas Cowboys, their offensive line, they that's where they need to improve. Yeah. Okay, because. When the Dallas Cowboys, like, for years, they were known their offensive line were dominating people. That's not the case anymore. Right. They've gotten older. They haven't been able to run, run, uh, run the ball like they've done in the past. So I don't, know if, I don't know if Saquon necessarily improves upon that because they need to fix the problems up front. Mike first. T, final thoughts. Go. Yeah, I disagree with D-Wood. I like Saquon to Dallas for this reason. He's bigger and stronger than Tony Pollard. I think he's a blend of Zeke Elliott and Pollard. And here's the other thing. It's but the old axiom, not. guys. You got to pass to score and run to win. We know they could score early. He's a finisher that they didn't have he's last year, and he's it cost them. He's a finisher. I'm not saying he's the only thing they need. I'm saying he's something they could desperately use. And Dominique, in his disagreement, is actually somewhere down deep inside in agreement with me. Within an organization, you have a GM, potentially a head coach. You've got coach, other coaches. Not everybody agrees with the pick for the quarterback. Think about the Trey Lance, Mac Jones, Justin Fields year that we had. There were people in the 49ers building that thought they should have drafted Justin Fields. Some people thought Mac Jones. It is not, it, 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 you got a GM who decides, and a head coach, who decides who you take. So it doesn't surprise me that people inside the building would think, we've seen this guy. We know, we know that he has handled everything, changing offensive coaches, head coaches, changing, you know, the roster, having nothing. He's comported himself. Justin Fields has handled himself like a true pro here. But I'm not at all surprised by Schefter saying that this is taking longer than the Bears would like because even though Ryan Poles would love to get this done by free agency, other teams know that they're desperate to move on from him. So why are you going to give them top compensation? You're going to look around and see Kirk Cousins. What's his asking price? Baker Mayfield. Everything else. Yeah. The, 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 the other side of it, though, and Mike T, you and I talked about this this morning, and I'd like you to illuminate, <coughs> pardon me, the people who are with us this morning. There's also an element of this that suggests that there's no team in the league that views Justin Fields as a surefire, oh, my God, I can't believe I can get him for this price guy. I definitely thought yes. someone would feel that way. Yes. Mike T., I think you thought that as well. But this suggests that none of the other 31 teams in the league say, oh, my goodness, for a third-round pick, I can get Justin Fields in two years at this? I, I cannot believe teams are not chomping at the bit to make that deal. Yeah, Greeny, I'm totally with you. The 31 teams have spoken, however. So you and I were in the camp, a young, talented player, needs a change of scenery, wasn't really supported the right way, and he could go on and have a really good career. Maybe he's not top 10, but certainly one of the 15 best quarterbacks on the planet. However, based on Adam's report and, and the lack of the trade, 31 teams have said, no, 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 no. We like him, but not at the price that Chicago wants. And maybe he's more like Baker Mayfield, who, if we remember, guys, he had to go compete with Kyle Trask of all mm -hmm. quarterbacks mm -hmm. to actually earn the job. So every day this trade doesn't happen, especially when we get to next week, guys, their value, their leverage goes down. And the other variable is this. Justin Fields is beloved, rightfully so. He has said everything right since he's been a Chicago Bear. <clears throat> he's anxious. He wants to get to his next spot as quickly as possible. That locker room is looking at their head coach and their GM like, hey, are you going to treat him fairly? Because he's done everything right as well. Mm -hmm. So that's another variable in play yeah. here. Bottom line of it, Neek, I mean, I, I don't want to keep picking on this one player. But, I mean, if 32 teams had the choice between Kenny Pickett and Justin Fields right now, and the circumstances of their contracts aren't that different. Pickett is one year behind Fields, if you will, in that, in that five-year um, cycle that the first-round picks get. Are there teams out there that would choose Pickett over Fields? Like, I just don't understand what the Steelers aren't seeing that the rest of us are. How do you see this thing, Nick? Yeah. yeah, I think the Steelers certainly would choose Fields over Pickett, but there are a lot of other quarterbacks out there that haven't made their decisions, like Kirk Cousins, that I think most teams would take over Justin Fields. The biggest problem with me when evaluating Justin Fields is that I know he's been in a tough situation, but one of the things that you need to address is his 
desire to hold on to the ball for a mm -hmm. long time. And you would have thought that being behind a not good offensive line for an extended period of time, he would have developed and fixed that particular habit. But that's the one that's hard to get over. And I think that it's kind of a microcosm for what you're getting when you get him is he's a boomer bust player. Sometimes he holds on to the ball long enough to make something incredible happen. And then sometimes he holds on to it long enough to get sacked or throw an interception. And I think that's what's scaring teams off is if you want to get kind of a, a prospect that has a high upside but also kind of has a low floor, you want to get him on a rookie deal in the draft. You don't want to get him a couple years away from a big-time extension. So mm -hmm. I, I would be trepidatious on Justin Fields, too, until all these other quarterbacks have found their landing spot. If he's the last man standing, then I'd give up a third or a second to bring Justin Fields in, but not until Kirk Cousins and Baker Mayfield and some of these other guys have uh, found a, a landing spot. Mike T, very quick, final word, go. But Greedy, yeah, to Nick's point, some team I thought would have said, like, because of all those things, he's an unexpected opportunity. He's great value because his upside's so good, and we already have some, like, couple years of real good film of him. Not, it's, it's inconsistent, and I just thought somebody would jump in here and said, hey, we could make this good and much more consistent, and he'll be our starter.